Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei die Autotester und damit willkommen in Schweden. Sau kalt haben wir es gerade, minus 9 Grad und wir sind heute hier mit Magna, wie ihr sehen könnt, auf einem Flugfeld. Das ist aber mittlerweile eine Teststrecke und wir schauen uns heute das Thema Sensoren an in Fahrzeugen. Es gibt unterschiedlichste Sensoren, die Magna anbietet für die Autoindustrie. Und wir erfahren heute, was diese Sensoren können, wofür die jeweils eingesetzt werden, unterhalten uns mit Experten und schauen mal, was die Autos heute und vor allen Dingen auch zukünftig alles tun, damit wir noch sicherer und noch komfortabler unterwegs sind. What we use this area for is mainly for our uh, research, uh, which is located right across the street. So what we do there is we investigate different kinds of scenarios uh, that maybe are causing a problem in the traffic environment. So what we do is we really, we build up the whole scenario here and then run it in the vehicles and see how they perform, monitor what the driver does, and understand uh, what we can from that traffic scenario so we can apply that technology uh, to our sensors and uh, make better products. So it's an old uh, airfield, uh, but we've modified it. It's 950 meters long, 30 meters wide. We have a 75 by 75 meter, kind of like a VDA surface in the center and a 150 meter crossing uh, there. So we're able to do lots of different scenarios or different traffic scenarios here. And this test track is fantastic to have because our research facility is just right across the street here. It's 150 meters away, well, maybe a little bit more than that. And then we can just come out here and do our testing and then go back and analyze it uh, in a smooth and efficient way. It's uh, just phenomenal to have a facility so close, be able to go out there and do testing and then come back uh, and go back to our offices, so it's perfect. Moderne Sensoren in Fahrzeugen können wirklich sehr viel. Was sie allerdings immer noch nicht können, das ist hinter eine unübersichtliche Kuppe oder um eine Ecke herumzuschauen. Allerdings muss man fairerweise sagen, so ganz richtig ist das heute auch nicht mehr. Uh, we are here to talk about connected vehicles and uh, about 10 to 20 percent of the crashes is linked to non line of sight conditions. That means that it's not enough with onboard sensing the next generation vehicles needs to share information among each other. And we have a concept we call the collective perception, where actually different road users can share information with each other. So that means that the vehicles can see around corners with the help from others. And that's important to, to reduce uh, the number of crashes in traffic. Uh, for collective perception, some different uh, important use cases is that we, we can address more of vulnerable road users those who are not protected uh, by the cars, you know, the cyclists, the pedestrians, the e-scooters or motorcycles. With the collective perception, we can cover more of these uh, vulnerable road users and, and uh, avoid crashing with them. Magna is uh, joining the North Star Innovation Program, which means that we are building a millimeter wave base station here in the airfield in Vorgorda. Uh, this allows us to experiment with uh, next generation sensing technology, which is, uh, which is the joint sensing and communication. That's where we actually combine the communication technology with the radar technology. And this allows us to see more and communicate uh, at the same time. Wärmebildkameras werden bereits heute in hochpreisigen Fahrzeugen als Teil der Assistenz- und Sicherheitssysteme angeboten. Aber diese Fahrzeuge bieten deutlich mehr als nur den Vorteil, dass man in der Nacht Dinge erkennen kann. Okay, what we have is our thermal camera. This is our Gen 4. And what it allows to is it, it's a passive system. So it, it measures the, the thermal radiation coming from objects around it. Like a, the body normally produces thermal radiation. So this camera works really well in not only day conditions, but it works well at night uh, where a normal camera can't see objects. You're still emitting radiation. Uh, so we can detect that with the camera and we can see different things at night. This camera now is our Gen 4. Uh, we use it mainly as a visualization system. It can be used for uh, active headlight adjustments to detect uh, uh, or direct the headlights to a pedestrian. But our next generation, our Gen 5, uh, we're looking to get the price down on it, so you can see this in not just the premium models, but in more standard vehicles. And what it'll allow you to do is that we're going to implement a convoluted neural network in it. Uh, so it'll be able to detect uh, different objects like a normal camera system would. It'll be able to detect vehicles, motorcyclists, bicyclists, pedestrians and animals. So it'll allow you to do a lot more. It's a good system to augment the current uh, sensor set that we have in the vehicles today, uh, like your camera and your radar. 
This will add another level to it so you can see at longer distances, you can see pedestrians and stuff at night. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages that we can have by adding the thermal system into uh, the, the sensor set in the vehicle. Besonders wichtig bei der Entwicklung und auch dem Einsatz von Sensorik in Fahrzeugen ist immer zu verstehen, wie die Limits dieser Sensoren tatsächlich aussehen. So for autonomous driving, we are uh, looking at sensor systems that can actually determine how far they can see in different weather conditions and different uh, challenging conditions. So it's as you might know, the sun is not always shining all over the world. We have different challenging conditions. So like here in Sweden, now we have snow and the car needs to be understand how far it can see in these conditions. So that's why we are experimenting with new technology. Like you can see here on this vehicle, there are some different sensing modalities that, the, that is addressing different challenging conditions. So what they will change is the, that these vehicles will be able to operate in more uh, different conditions, not only the perfect conditions where you have road barriers, which is very limited. And today autonomous systems are operational mainly in mines, but to go beyond in real traffic and more complex traffic situations beyond highways and also interact with humans, these systems need to be able to be at the next level. In unseren Fahrzeugen gibt es mittlerweile reichlich Möglichkeiten, um sich von der Fahrt und damit der eigentlichen Tätigkeit ablenken zu lassen. Aber auch hier gibt es mittlerweile Systeme, die für Sicherheit sorgen. We are out on the test track here and we are talking about distracted driving. Magna's uh, DMS system, which stands for Driver Monitoring System, has the ability to understand where the driver is looking at any time. So if the driver is looking away from the road for a too long time, the system can warn that the driver is distracted. The system can also um, detect if the driver is getting more drowsy. The, the problem with driver with distraction on the road is an increasing problem because the automation is increasing. We get more uh, time to do other things than, than focusing on driving. And then with the smartphones, the distraction is unfortunately increasing in traffic and we also see it in the number of crashes linked to distraction. So in five years, the number of systems, the driver monitoring systems, will in Europe increase quite a lot because there's a mandate, there's a general safety regulations that mandating that new uh, vehicle models should have a driver monitoring system that can warn if the driver is distracted. And that's a good thing because that would improve safety. So now we are standing still here and I can tell a bit more how the system is working. Um, what you see here on the screen is that the system has detected the car in front of us and this screen is just for visualization of how the, func how the function is working. This is not in uh, cars on the roads visible, this is just for demonstration purposes and it's also for us when we are testing the different systems now when we are the test track. So we see here that the, the limit of where the forward collision warning occurs depends on your attention. So if I'm looking down, it's closer to the car and when I'm looking up, it's further from the car. That's one example how we can use driver monitoring systems. Das war's hier von der Magna Teststrecke und die gute Nachricht ist, ich darf endlich raus aus dem kalten Wetter und es war wirklich spannend zu sehen, was diese modernen Sensorsysteme so alles liefern können. Die gute Nachricht außerdem ist, dass wir in Zukunft solche Systeme nicht nur in teuren Fahrzeugen der Oberklasse sehen werden, sondern eben auch in kompakten Fahrzeugen, sodass wir alle in naher Zukunft schon deutlich sicherer und natürlich auch noch mal komfortabler unterwegs sein werden.